Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Tuesday, the 25th of October, 2016. This is episode 199, Near Miss. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How are you guys? Do you have a good week? Our week was eventful and full, as it always is. There was trunk or treating, which I didn't go to, on Friday because I was working until 7 and then I went to a party thing. Um, where, okay, so I did knit a little, but mostly I slept at the party. Who I am like the worst party girl ever. I'm not that person anyway. But I was really, really tired because I had been up since 5 o'clock that morning and I left at about midnight and we were watching scary movies in the dark and... My best friend was sitting right next to me, so I was like in a safe, warm place because there were blankets, and I totally dozed during the movie. I woke up a lot, like it was just catnap, but yeah, that's what I did at my movie party. But I did knit a little there. And today is a near miss because yesterday my nephew came home sick. He had a sore throat. But he was able to go today if he was feeling better because he didn't have any, like, any symptoms of contagion. My sister and I are pretty sure it's because the weather has turned quite chilly. And, um, and that with some dehydration. Because the weather turned chilly very quickly. It wasn't like a gradual thing. It was like, oh, it's the end of summer. Boom. It's the middle of autumn. <laughs> As happens here in Michigan. I mean, it's totally possible that on Halloween we'll all be wearing tank tops because that has happened before. But we think that's what the problem was. And this morning he was like, I still feel sick. And I was like, okay, well, if you stay home, you're going to stay in your bed all day and you will only get out to eat and to use the restroom. And he was like, oh, I guess I'll go to school. I was like, yeah, I didn't think you were that sick. So what do we have for knitting things? The Finisher Frog Craft Along is going strong. You guys are still kicking butt. And I think next week I'll show the prizes again since it's been a few weeks. But there is a project bag and a skein of sock yarn up for grabs. The tag for that is hashtag BPHFOF16 should you want to tag your projects or your progress or whatever with that on Instagram or Ravelry or places where you tag things. I don't know. I only tag things on Instagram. But you could. I did. I have in the past tagged things on Ravelry. So you could. You could use that tag wherever you wanted. I have a finished object. I can participate in my own knit along, kind of. I mean, I finished something that has been on the needles for a really long time. These are the Cusp Socks by Cookie A. There are two of them. And, oh, you can see the lace really good on that one, I think. So there's the lace panel that starts in the back, right below ribbing. It comes around, comes down on top of the foot, and joins, and then, and then ribbing. Um, the pattern is really well written as, I've never worked a cookie a pattern that wasn't really well written. And I've worked a fair amount of them. So very well written, very enjoyable once I finally sat down and just worked on it. Um, this is where I was last week. So I finished the lace panel, which I didn't have that much left to go. So I finished out the lace. And then once I was finished with the lace, once it was just ribbing, of course it went zoom, zoom, and super fast. So I worked the... Um, I worked the foot with less stitches than the pattern says. I may have worked the leg with less stitches than the smaller size. I'm not positive because it is ribbing, so it will stretch. Um, but I know that I worked the foot with less. Not the, the top of the foot, I'm pretty sure, had the recommended number of stitches. But on the, the sole of the foot, I only had... 25 stitches to compensate for the extra stretchiness from the ribbing on the top. This yarn is Hedgehog Fibers Monsoon and it is really, really soft. I don't think that I have another skein of Hedgehog Fibers, which is really sad, but I'm going to try to get another skein 
in the future, not the near future, because Christmas is coming and kids have precedence over me wanting things. But, you know, someday I would like to work with some more Hedgehog because this yarn is really, really soft. I love the pooling and the flashing, and um, it just works up really lovely. Can you see that? Not on that one so much. So on this one, you can see that there are orange flecks in there, and I am not an orange person, but I really liked when the orange flecks would pop up as I was knitting. I'd be like, oh yeah, this for a few stitches. What else about this? I've worked on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. They are still damp because I just soaked them yesterday and it's chilly so it takes things a little longer to dry. Overall a really enjoyable knit. If you haven't knit Cookie A's patterns, this is from the ebook um, Knit Sock Love which was gifted to me forever ago by Holly and I love it. I love the whole ebook so if you're going to get an ebook full of many pattern socks, I would definitely recommend that one. Um, but if you want to try Cookie A, the monkey socks are a free pattern that everybody has made with good reason. It's just a really, she's a really good designer of pattern socks because I feel like she thinks of shapes and how things go together just a little bit differently than I do, but when I start working the pattern, I'm like, oh yeah, totally, that totally makes sense. So these socks are completed. I'm so happy that they're completed. They're beautiful socks, and it's not like I didn't enjoy working on them, but I had them on the needles for a really long time. And I'm starting to feel some guilt about the length of time that some of my projects have been on the needles. That's a thing. I also worked on my log cabin blanket, though not at the party. That was um, Sunday, I think. I was reading a book and watching podcasts and knitting on this because I could knit on this as I did both. So this is the pistachio section. So the, what is this, the second full round. So there's the center block and then there's a round outside of that and then this round, the second round outside of that, is fully completed. And I am definitely going to do at least a third round because can't really unbunch this to see how big it is, but it doesn't seem, I mean this is kind of what it is folded in half, like the, the width of it, and that's not quite big enough, so I'm going to do a third round eventually. And then I'll see if I want to do the border or if I want to do a fourth round. We'll see. The yarn is Karen Simply Soft and this is pistachio. This is bone. I want to say Heather Gray. Um, pretty sure this is chocolate and dark sage are the colors that I'm using. I could be making all of that up. It's all written out in the show notes for colorways. But that means that I have again accomplished my um, my four hours of knitting on this project for the month. So when this is the project that I'm supposed to work on, I'm really good at accomplishing those four hours. When it's other projects, not so much. Need to work on that. Oh well. I guess I don't really need to work on that. Like that was a goal, but there's no knitting police who's going to yell at me if I don't finish those things. So whatever. I also worked on my tube socks, which are not going to be tube socks. I'm going to put in a heel, um, which we'll have to, I'm pretty sure that when I tried on the sock, the heel needs to be right above this red section. So I'm thinking I might make a ribbed heel, like do a, I haven't decided if I want to do an afterthought heel or a fish lips kiss heel, even though if I do fish lips kiss, I'm going to have to graft all of that, which doesn't bother me. I don't have a problem grafting. I actually really like grafting. Um, but I'm going to wait until I finish the second sock before making, I'm probably going to wait until I finish the second sock before deciding how I'm going to make the heel. I like it fine as tube socks. They fit fine as tube socks, but I want them to be a little bit longer. And I guess I could 
rip out this cuff and do just gray on top. That might be an, a different option. Hmm. Okay, so next week I will probably have made a decision because I will probably be to the cuff on the second sock. But this is how much I worked on this first sock this week. So I had one full pattern repeat to go plus a couple colors. Finished that. Yeah, now I don't know if I want to put in a heel because I think it would just be... I enjoy having... I enjoy tube socks. I like wearing them. Um, my favorite pair of commercial socks is a pair of tube socks that had toes that are totally worn out and um, I can't wear them out in public. They're only for around the house when I'm not going to have company because they're that embarrassing. Um, not design wise, but how torn up they are. They have holes everywhere and I still love them and I can't bring myself to throw them away. So I think I'm going to keep these as tube socks and I'm going to rip out the cuff and add on length at the cuff because they fit really well as tube socks. I tried it on and I was like, oh yeah, that's great. The ribbing right around my arch is perfect. Yep, I'm not putting in a heel. I thought maybe I was going to put in a heel, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to rip out this ribbing here and put it back on the needle and knit, I don't know, 10 or 20 rounds in that gray color that I have. Patton's Croy Gray Marl. This is Patton's Croy in the, let's, let's see, my poor battered ball band, um, in the rag shades, in the blue stripe rag, I want to say, but I might be making that up. Yes, blue striped rag. So this is the first one that is almost complete, except it needs 10 to 20 rounds of ribbing at the top. So I will... I don't know if I'll do that today or if I'll leave that for a couple days from now. We'll see. I haven't decided. But I will show you. So here's the other sock. And I didn't do very much progress on this one because I, I looked at them and I decided, well, I'm so close to finishing this one. I'll just make this my carry around project. And so this one, I have five red stripes and I need seven red stripes and then now it's going to be a round of gray and then 10 to 20 rounds of the other gray to make it the appropriate length. I might, um, I might work this up the cuff to the, to the appropriate length. I might work it up to the red stripes and then put them on, um, on a long circular so I can try on the socks as I go as I add up those extras. But no, I think 20. I'm going to do 20. Let me just plan my whole project as I'm talking to you on the podcast because I really actually enjoy like speaking out my project and I don't have anyone to do that with in person. So I'm going to do 20 rounds of the gray so I don't have to try it on. I can just put this back on the circular and I'll do 20 rounds on this one. Um, yeah. And so this one's going to be finished next week because I've decided right now that I am going to rip out this bind off today and then, um, join on that gray today. And then this will be my carry around project until it's finished. So I can have one completely finished and then I will pick up this one again and work, you know, a stripe a day or more than a stripe a day as it's been happening recently. And those are on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. The log cabin blanket is on US 8 needles. I don't remember the millimeters on that off the top of my head. And then this morning, because I have been going sort of monogamous, I have, the way I've been working it has been one modular project um, one actual knitting project and the tube socks. So I've been working, like I've been working on those in rotation because I can't possibly just sit down and work on something for hours unless I'm doing something else, like at a movie or a concert. But even if I'm watching movie at home, like I still rotate through. So that 
the other project this week was the cusp socks, but I finished those yesterday. So last night when I got home from work, I was like, well, I need a new project. And, um, okay, story time. Before I tell you about what I'm working on now, I'm going to go a little out of order. So I still had a little bit of time before work and I was like, you know, I haven't finished any of my hexapuffs for the week. So I should probably work on those before starting a new project or not starting a new project, but picking up a, a different actual project. Well, I, I grabbed my yarn bowl, which is where the, the five skeins of yarn were sitting inside here. And it was a huge tangled mess. And not just with that, but also with my hexagon socks. No, not hexagon. What are they? They're not hexagon socks. They are by Cookie A, rhombus, the rhombus socks. Sorry, my geometry got a little messed up there for a second. So this, this one was pulled off the needles. That's why there are two different needles going on here. Um, so the front, I need to check against the pattern to make sure that that is not messed up and has stitches dropped down and can't tell if that is a stitch or a float or like a it dropped down one and now it's a slip stitch or whatever. So I need to fix that. The other side was on the needles fine. So that's fine. But all the yarns were tangled up in this yarn. So that was really frustrating. So I untangled that and I was like, no, I'm not going to work on the rhombus today because it's not its fault. It's in timeout, but it's in timeout. And then I went to start working on the the hexapuffs, which I was magic looping five of them. And this is a thing. Do you know what this is? This should be attached to this. I'm not sure what happened to it, but I do know that the children have this really annoying tendency to drop things on the ground and then leave them. I am really particular about keeping my crafting stuff in a very specific area. It either goes on my desk or there's a red recliner right next to my desk or the coffee table right next to the red recliner. Like this is my space. I don't have a bedroom right now. I sleep on the recliner a lot of times, not always, um, but I don't have a bed, but the, the other part is, um, like if my sister stays the night at her boyfriend's house, I sleep in her bed because she is a very kind and benevolent sister and lets me sleep in a bed when she's not here. Um, so this is my space right now. And they like to sit in my recliner, which I understand it's very comfortable. And also the dog likes to sit in my recliner. So it is possible that the dog knocked something off of the table or something. Totally. But they then play over it and don't pick it up and my, my needle got broken and I am pretty upset about it because this is the third set of needles that has been messed up because instead of picking my things up, the kids play all over it. <sighs> so very upset about that. So the rhombus socks, it's not its fault, but it's in timeout right now because picking, like trying to pick it up and work on it is just making me mad. I just need a couple days, a couple days. So back to this project and then I'll talk more about the hexa buffs. So last night I came home and I wasn't quite ready for sleep after I had gotten all the kids to bed and um, laundry figured out for the night and all that. So I picked up the bad nutshell and there is not a stitch marker in here telling you where I was, but look, 
I'm not in the middle of a short row section and I did six rows for sure this morning. So there's a little bit of progress, but I can show it to you not all bunched up. So there's eyelets. Can you see them down the middle? So that's like the center spine area. It's right here. And then there is stockinette and garter and Oh, there is, there is a stitch marker. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that was the last time I actually showed you the shawl, but maybe not because I was working short rows. I don't know. I don't know how much progress I've made since then, but I am going to move this right now so that next week you'll be able to actually see where I was this week because I'm going to work on this, um, at least for today, it's going to be my, my other knitting project. So yeah, that's, that's the Bad Nut Shawl by Josh Ricks. And I'm knitting it using solar flare fibers in the jet lag zombie colorway. It's the BFL base. It was the, it was an exclusive zombie knit apocalypse colorway. And I can't remember which year it was because they're all blending together now. <laughs> So yeah, that's the, I want to say 2014, but that might be wrong. So that's the shawl. And I am a little more than halfway through this, the third section, or maybe I'm further than halfway through. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the, there's the fourth section and then the fifth section is the border. So I'm getting closer to the shawl being a completed thing. While I'm speaking of shawls, I'm wearing one today, which is not a normal thing for me. I don't usually wear shawls. I wear my cowl, cowls, I have a couple. I have, no, I have more than a couple. I have like four or five and I wear them pretty regularly. I, um, I wear my fingerless mitts a lot, but I don't wear shawls a lot, but I am wearing today my graphic infection, which is also a Josh Ricks pattern. It was the first zombie knit apocalypse that was his um, mystery design for that. So here it is. The yarn is Nooch Fibers. I couldn't tell you the colorway names because I did it forever ago. But it is two different colorways. And you can see that there are slip stitch motifs that go down. It's a, it's not a huge shawl. Um, I had enough leftover yarn from this to make a pair of stitch surfer socks. And I used it in the leftovers in sock yarn blankets, several of them. So that's my graphic infection. But um, the reason why I don't wear shawls is today is a good is a good time for me to wear it because I'm wearing a hoodie that zips up so it keeps those ends in and contained. I have a really hard time with my shawls coming undone because I move around a lot in my daily life. So if the ends aren't contained, they go all over the place. And I don't have a shawl pin. So yeah, I just, I don't wear my shawls very frequently. I'm much more likely to grab a cowl because it just stays there. But I had this yesterday at work so that I could, um, so that I could have another layer in case my cowl wasn't warm enough. I wore my Buffalo crossing out of the hand spun, which is dangerous because I took it off and the dogs grabbed it, a dog grabbed it out of my pocket. And I have some suspicions on which dog it would be probably my work boyfriend because he likes to go in my pockets. He's so pretty and he's such a jerk, but he's my favorite. So anyway, I'm pretty sure he stole it. But then all of a sudden, like four dogs were like, Ooh, I need this. And actually all of the dogs were clustered around them. And I was like, stop, stop, don't break my cowl because I can't remake that yarn. The, the dyer of the wool doesn't die anymore. So yeah. I still wore it though the rest of the day and I'll probably still wear it to work again because like even though it's kind of a precious 
I also really like it and want to wear it. So basically, I'm abusive to my hand knits. It is what it is. Anyway, what were we even talking about? No, oh, I was talking about my shawl. So let's jump back to modular projects. I have 61 miter squares done on my blanket because I did two this week. This is yarn from Christina. And this one is from the tube socks. That's a little stripe progression. And actually, when I was binding off the top of the sock, it started to go into this blue stripe. So I cut out this blue stripe and then started working on the gray stripe again. So this isn't an actual representation of how thick the stripes are in that because this gray stripe is less than what it would be, but that's fine because I wanted more. I wanted this blue in there too, so I could have both blues. So that's fine. So it's up to 61 squares, which let me turn it this way and show you. The top half is almost finished, and then I'll be working on the bottom half of this center panel for my blue and green blanket. I love it so much. It's so pretty. And there are so many yarns in here that are from my own projects. So I can be like, oh yeah, that was this. And then there are so many yarns in here that are from friends that I can be like, oh yeah, that's from this friend, if I remember. Of course, sometimes I get a little mixed up, but it's okay. I am almost finished with this barn racing square, so I'm counting it finished because I have like four more rounds in the green and then the the black. So this is that same yarn from Christina. And that this will be barn raising square number 93, which means I'm getting kind of close to the halfway point. I mean, I won't be to the halfway point by the end of the year probably, but I'm getting close. And then let's go back to back to my Hexapuff story. So I untangled the yarn and I was like, well, I mean, theoretically I could work on DPNs and that would be fine because I didn't have time to run out to, I don't even know where a local yarn shop is around here. And I was like, I don't really want to get bamboo circulars for it. And, um, Joann's and Michael's, they're around here ish. Like they're not super far away, but they're out of my way. Like I have to go specifically in that direction. But Meyer, which is like a grocery store, but bigger than a grocery store. Um, it's regional. I guess you could kind of compare it to Walmart for like what you can find there. They have a craft section and I had just been there that morning but I didn't know I needed this. So side tangent story time. Amanda and I went to Meyer yesterday because Amanda was like, let's go walk around Meyer," And I was like, okay, sure. I have some time before work. If that's what you want to do, that's what we can do. So we went and we picked up some things and she wanted to get yarn because it's getting cooler and, um, She's feeling crafty. She doesn't have a stash because she just, she buys on demand. Like if she wants it, she'll go get it. And she doesn't, yeah, she just buys on demand, which is kind of cool. Although I really like having my stash so I can be like, mm, I just want to start a new project, but I don't want to go anywhere to get yarn for it. <sighs> Not a problem for Amanda because she uses um, non indie dyed things and Meyer is open 24 hours. So she can just go in the middle of the night if she wants to. But we went over there and the whole reason why I was going to Meyer yesterday and why, did I say that she w she wanted to walk around? That's usually how it happens. No, yesterday I was like, hey, I'm going to Meyer. Do you want to go with me? And she was like, sure, I'll go with you. So the whole reason I was going is that I didn't have, no, it's not that I didn't have, it's that I couldn't find a darning needle, not a single one. And then of course, once I got home, I found one. But anyway, we went so I could get a darning needle so I could finish the cuffs, cusp socks. 
Oh, while we were there, we picked up some yarn, which I'll show you in new things, and some and darning needles and stuff. So then, I'm really angry, and I'm about to go to work. Very, very frustrated that yet another needle has been broken. And like, these are not inexpensive needles. That's a high, a high, um, one of my collage square needles was bent so that it, I, I finally threw it out because I was able to bend it back to being straight, but it caused a really rough ridge in the middle, like a series of ridges. And it was just, it kept slowing me down as I was trying to knit back and forth. So I was like, it's not even worth it. Like I'd rather throw it away and use something else or replace it eventually. So one of my square collage needles got thrown away. And then I think the other one was also a Haya Haya. Um, it was a sock needle that I was actually working on on the cusp with that I had to pull out of the project and use the sock rockets for instead. So I was really irritated. Like, how hard is it to just pick up something that you know doesn't belong on the ground and put it up where you know it should sort of be because all of my things go on my desk or on that chair or on that coffee table. That's just where my things go. So if you see it's mine, just pick it up and put it there. I'm not going to be mad that you put my thing on my desk. I'm going to be mad if you start putting random things on my desk, but anyway. So I went and looked through Meyer to see if they had DPNs. They don't have any needles that are size three or smaller, even though they do carry some sock weight yarn and some lace weight yarn, but they don't carry anything under US four. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm not going to get anything. But then I saw this pack of DPNs US four and it was on clearance for 30% off. So instead of 329, it was 230. And I was like, it's fine. I have a couple size three DPNs at home. I'll just use two size threes and two size fours and it will be fine. These hexapuffs that I'll make it now won't be that much different in size than the ones I was making before. And the universe knew that I was crabby and needed a pick me up. So it said when I, when I rang this up that it was 99 cents and then everything, all of the clearance yesterday was an, an additional 25% off. So I paid 77 cents for these after tax. So a little less grumpy, but still grumpy. These are not as nice as my circular and I can only work one of them at a time, but I do have two hexapuffs that I'm going to count as finished because they don't have stuffing. I'm going to the basement today. Today I have to go to the basement and I have to organize some of my things a little bit because we need to be able to get to the furnace because it's almost furnace lighting season. So I'm going to go and I have a general idea where my stuffing is. I'm going to go and get it so that I can finish Gabriel's hexapuff, the big one, so that I can start on the other pieces and so I can stuff these two hexapuffs. So I'm counting these two as finished, even though they're both attached to the yarn still and need to be stuffed. And they're sitting out, hanging out on the US fours. So this brings me up to 611. This is the um, Croy socks that I am making my stripes out of, but I had two scraps. So I tied them together. I used this part down here is what I pulled out before I started the second sock or the first sock, whichever, before I started it to get to the red. So that was this scrap. And then this is the, the rest of what I made after I made the mitered square. So that's one. And this is some yarn that Haley sent me a long time ago and I used it to make a um, Stephen West designed this hat string band for James, I want to say Bartley. 
he did the He's British and he had a podcast for a while, and now he is doing tech editing on patterns. Dancing Geek. Here we go. It all connects in my brain. Um, I made that for him because he won a prize on this podcast. So I used that with another yarn to make the string band. So I have a lot of that yarn left over, so I might use it to make, um, you know, I'm, I think that I'm definitely going to use it to make a pair of yoga socks for Mary Lee because she finally tried on her yoga socks and she loves them and this kind of looks kind of Halloween-ish and she is very much a fall Halloween person. She worked in haunted houses for a few years, several years, I don't know, a really long time, many years doing haunted houses. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's this. And I have decided that I bought these needles, these ones, for not really a purpose because I can make it work using the two size 3 DPNs that I have. I was actually knitting with this needle from the, the broken one that has this blue that I showed you, which I'm going to cut off. And then since I'm working this circularly as a DPN, I only need to be able to knit with one end. This still tapers down nicely to knit off of. I just wouldn't be able to knit with it. But I'm going to use that. And then I am going to cut off the other needle from this cable because it's not useful as is. But I can use that as my fourth DPN. And then I can have size three DPNs and not have to worry about it. But now I do have this backup set of US4 DPNs should I need them for anything because I didn't have that size before or should I need to substitute them in for one of these four needles? So I'm just going to go back to making hexapuffs um, hopefully one a day but as on DPNs instead of five at a time. So do you want, would you like to see some other new things because they're pretty exciting. And they were purchased at yesterday's Meyer shopping trip. So I mentioned that there was some yarn. You don't need to see darning needles, right? You know what those look like. So I got some yarn because the yarn was buy one, get one, 25% off. And Amanda got three. So I got one in this Hometown USA, which is that yarn that I used to make the barley and the side cable mitts last week. And this is in the Vermont green and I love this color so much. So I think I'm going to make a barley hat for me out of this because the barley that I made was not for me. So I, and I do want a hat for work that, um, that doesn't have tassels because the hats I have right now that I can find are, um, a hat that Josh made me that has tassels and a hat that Lisa made me that has tassels. And that is a good way to get dogs all up in your face. <laughs> and I don't want that. So I'm going to make myself a hat for work um, using this. And my fingering weight hats, I don't know where they are. They got packed up for the move and I haven't unpacked them yet, I guess. So that's... Because otherwise I would just wear my sock head hat that Haley had made me because it stays on my head really well and it doesn't have my, many adornments. I probably wouldn't wear my string band just in case that string came undone. So that's, that'll be a new hat in the nearest future. And then we also got 18 count Crayola twistable colored pencils because I wanted to have a coloring book and crayon or a coloring book and pencils for work so that I could just leave it in my locker because I don't always feel like knitting on my lunch break. Sometimes I want to do something else, but I don't want to have to tote those things back and forth because I always have a knitting project. That's not a problem. So I will always have knitting with me, but I don't always want to be carrying around my 96 count um, Prismacolor colored pencils and a coloring book that's you know a largest size so 
I got a small coloring book and that's at work and the 18 count of Crayola colored pencils because it was buy one get one free for the twistable colored pencils so I got one and Amanda got one even though they were a little more expensive than I wanted to pay once I was once I was like well it's buy one get one free so they're really only $2.50 a piece I was like okay I'll pay that for colored pencils I I am not like I'm not opposed to paying money for good quality things, but like for colored pencils that I'm just going to leave at work and that, I don't know. I just, I have a really hard time justifying spending things on myself. Make sense? Hopefully. Okay. So I also found this, um, this coloring book. So it's Zen Doodle coloring and it's this sort of pictures where it's just all sorts of, it's not supposed to be a specific thing. So you can just go color with color with crazy. You can just go crazy with color. Um, yeah. So that was a really nice buy and like I needed another coloring book. So this is what my third one and I don't even color that often, but I could, and someday the girls will probably want to color too, and that's cool. And what if my sister wants to color? She could borrow a coloring book. Gabriel already likes to color, so maybe I'll let him color in my coloring books. I don't know about all that. I might just buy him his own coloring book. Hard to tell. But Mara is someday going to want to color in a coloring book. I know it. I know these things to be true. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but she's going to want to eventually. Those are my new things. So all I have left is reading. I'm still reading Daughter of the Forest. Um, it's good, but again, it's like, it's heavy. So I don't, it's not the, the book that I'm like, ooh, I want to read this right now. Yeah, let's read this. It's like my before bedtime reading because it gives me things to think about as I'm falling asleep which I need because my brain doesn't shut off. So if I can direct it towards something, at least then there's that. So it's only thinking about one thing instead of thinking about 10 things. I started and finished a library book. It's called Belle's Song, which I picked up because, um, because of the title. You know me, I don't read what books are about before I start reading them. That would be silly. And I love Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And I was like, oh, maybe it's another version of Beauty and the Beast because I will always read versions of Beauty and the Beast. It's my favorite fairy tale. But it's not. It's actually, um, it's written about a girl who is one of Geoffrey Chaucer's fellow pilgrims on the way to Canterbury. So, yeah, I... I do not recall Canterbury Tales. I read it in fourth grade, which sounds crazy, right? But um, I was in a really, a really advanced reading group at the charter school that I was in. And we read high school level books. Like that was our reading level. And my sister was in the same class because she and I read constantly. So we were on the same level. And so we read Canterbury Tales and um, we read some Shakespeare stuff. I don't know. We read a whole bunch of stuff that like now looking on it, I'm like, hmm. Like when I look at what Gabriel's reading on grade level, I'm like, I feel like you're, you're not where you could be. And then I recall that I was reading at a high school grade reading level in third grade. So it's not fair to expect him to have the same level of reading as I did because I was above average by a lot. Um, so I read the Canterbury Tales in fourth grade. <sighs> that was a really long time ago. So I don't remember the specifics of the stories. I'm probably going to see if I can find it on audiobook and listen to it. Um, I don't know that I would enjoy sitting down and reading the Canterbury Tales because I do remember my friends in high school it was not on my curriculum because I was in um, accelerated reading and advanced placement for my English classes the years that they were reading Canterbury Tales and 
those things just weren't, it just wasn't on the syllabus. So I remember them not enjoying it, but I think that, I think that the, I recall that the stories were really good, but the language was difficult because it's old English. Anyway, it was a really enjoyable story. Um, I got to revisit some of the characters from Canterbury Tales and it's like, it's a fair representation of the time, but of course it's a young adult book and it's more about the fancy than about the horrible graphic, the horrible graphic terrible things that could have happened at that time period. Although the main character does get like, does have a run in with the law and that's pretty, um, pretty interesting there. So I started and finished that and then I picked up another library book. So this is called Bloodlines and it's by Rochelle Mead. She wrote uh, the Vampire Academy series, which I haven't read, but I keep looking at. So this was from the first library that I went to and I was like, oh, Bloodlines, Vampire. Yeah, I'll read that. I'm not very far in. I am on page 22 because I just started it. Um, so this, um, this is the main character. Her name is Sydney. So what I have gathered so far in the first 22 pages is that vampires exist and there are two different races of vampires. Um, one who is one who's like creature of the night explodes in sunlight sort of thing. And another that is lesser somehow. I don't know. They're more human and they are able to um, interact more with humans, even though she is an alchemist. And the whole point of the alchemist is to make sure that vampires stay away from humans and that humans don't know about vampires, that sort of thing. So they're a secret society. Um, that's all I've got for you about this. Like, I don't really know that much about what's going on. The story is not gripping me yet. I'm only two, 22 pages in though. So I love vampires and I'm going to read it. I don't know how far I'll get into the series. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the beginning of Bloodlines. Maybe next week I'll come back and I'll be like, oh my gosh, it was so amazing. I love it. I need the second book right now. Who knows? It's hard to tell with me. But that is all I have for you this week. Um, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. I will see you next week. Bye!